How's it going? It's LHB. Today we're going to be talking all about melting furnaces and that includes anything from your basic electric melting furnace all the way up to propane furnaces and propane forges. We're going to be talking about basically every single thing that's out there as an option. We're going to go really in depth and talk about each option and try to figure out which one's going to be the best for you. Now it's really going to depend on what you're using your setup for. Maybe you're on a budget and you're just looking for a good cheap option. Or maybe you have a bunch of scrap laying around and you just want to be able to melt big stuff in a bunch of scrap. Or maybe your primary focus is going to be like mine, where it's mainly precious metals and smaller stuff. Or maybe you're going to get into something cool like knife making. No matter which one of those best describes you, by the end of this video, you're going to be able to make the best informed decision on which setup is going to work best for what you need. We're also going to go over some of the common issues that I see, especially with the electric furnaces and also some of the mistakes that I've made over the years. So hopefully you don't make the same ones and have to replace your furnace prematurely. So let's take a look at some of the options that are out there. So this is your typical entry level electric furnace. This is actually the option that I see most people go with. And this is actually the option that I went with myself when choosing my first furnace. As a matter of fact, I actually use these style of furnaces still to this day. Now the prices on these style of melting furnaces usually range anywhere from $200 on the very low end all the way up to four, sometimes $500. This type of furnace is gonna be perfect for the beginner. Maybe this is your very first purchase and you just kinda of wanna test the waters. This also might be a good option for you if you're not really planning on doing much scrap metals or even some knife making or that sort of thing. And when I say scrap metal, I'm mostly talking about bigger scrap metals like aluminum cans, that sort of thing. I'm not necessarily talking about scrap jewelry or anything like that. And even though a lot of these cheaper electric furnaces say in the titles of some of their listings that they can do a bunch of different scrap metals and that sort of thing, they definitely can. They will be capable of melting all sorts of kind of metals like brass and aluminum and copper. I just don't recommend it because it's going to be super hard on these cheaper electric furnaces. And if you think you're going to be melting a lot of scrap metals and bigger stuff, I just think that there's a better option for you later on in this video. Now, when it comes to all the different options as far as color and size and who the maker is, it's not really going to matter that much. And the honest truth about that is just that I've had so many of these machines over the years. I've actually torn them completely down to the bone. And on the inside, they're basically all the same thing. It's just a different shell with a different badge on the outside for the most part. Now, one thing you might want to consider is the size because most of the time they come in anywhere from one kilogram all the way up to three kilograms. But what's super nice is actually recently I've noticed that they've started putting out machines that are three in ones. So basically what these do is they are able to fit one, two and three kilogram crucibles inside of them. So if you can't really make up your mind on which one you should get, whether it's one or two or three, then maybe go with the three in one because then you don't really have to worry about it. So one thing you're going to want to keep in mind is that you're not going to be filling these crucibles up all the way to the brim. So if you get the three kilogram, just don't assume that you're going to be able to pour three kilogram pieces because it's just not realistic. It's always a good idea to give yourself a little cushion room. And honestly, these crucibles just aren't that trustworthy. So honestly, I never fill them up more than halfway. Now that's just my opinion and you're going to do what you want, but I would highly recommend against it. Now, the reason I don't recommend doing a lot of scrap metals and that sort of thing in these setups is just because these are really hobby electric furnaces. And because they're electrical, they have all sorts of different electrical components that usually go bad. And honestly, it's just not a good idea because it's a hobby furnace. It's not really meant to be on constantly or be overworked. And if you're going to be melting a lot of scrap metals and that sort of thing, I just think that you should go with a different option. And I would primarily use this type of furnace for smaller pours and mainly precious metals. Now, will you be able to get this furnace and still be able to melt all those other sorts of metals in there? You probably get away with it. It's just gonna make your machine not last as long and you might have a part go bad like a temperature sensor or the coils will go bad. Not only are some of these scrap metals gonna make your machine super nasty, but also a lot of these metals that have a lot of this slag and that sort of thing just kind of really mess up the machine and metals like copper just radiate so hot that they really do a number on these sorts of setups and they just don't last as long. I'd say you probably get twice the life out of it if you didn't do scrap metal or anything like that in it. Now, like I said earlier, there are some common issues that I see with these cheaper electric furnaces and that's going to be the heating coil or the temperature sensor. 
And honestly, the reason that I see most people needing to replace one of these furnaces is honestly from something that they did and something that I've done before. And that's just not keeping track of the integrity of your crucibles before you go and pour for another session and the crucible gives out and it spills silver or whatever metal that you're pouring all over the inside and then it usually leaks down and gets all over the electrical and then you're going to need a new furnace. So you need to make sure that no matter what setup you choose, you're always checking your graphite crucibles to make sure that they're still good and ready to go for another session. And when it comes to the temperature sensor and the coils, Usually those just go bad from what I said earlier. It just comes from overusing the machine, having it on constantly. And also if you're pouring a lot of metals like copper and that sort of thing, it's just going to do a number on the machine and these electrical components are just going to give out faster. Now I will add, especially when it comes to the temperature sensor, you can actually find those on eBay fairly cheap. They're like 20, 30 bucks. And also when it comes to the temperature sensor, you could hit up the person who makes the machine and see if they would send you a replacement part, especially if something happened prematurely and it wasn't really your fault. I've actually had to replace the temperature sensor on my units a couple times over the years and they're really easy to replace. It's just a couple screws and a couple wires and they swap in and out in about five minutes. Now, who would I recommend this type of setup to? I would honestly recommend this setup to either a beginner or someone who's just going to really be focused on smaller stuff and precious metals and not really going to be doing a ton of scrap metals like copper, aluminum, and brass. Another reason you might go with one of these smaller electrical furnaces is maybe you don't feel comfortable yet with propane and working with gases, and maybe you just want like a plug-and-play scenario, or maybe you just want a budget-friendly machine, and honestly, these get the job done. Like I said, I have been using these for years. I still continue to use them because they just work for what I'm doing. But you also got to consider that I'm not doing a ton of scrap metals, so it does work great for me. Okay, so moving on to another option that I see out there a lot, and that is your tabletop front-loading furnace. And this is still an electrical furnace, so it's pretty much the same thing as the last one, but there is some differences that I want to go over. And that is the fact that it is a front-loading furnace versus a top-loading furnace. So what that's going to do for you is not only do you have more room to fit maybe multiple crucibles in there, but you're not limited on just crucibles. You can put your lost wax casting stuff in there. If you want to do burnouts, you can treat this furnace like a kiln. It's programmable. So this is basically the same thing as the last electric furnace. It's just much nicer and you have a little bit more versatility when it comes to what you can put inside of it. Now, obviously, because this is still an electrical furnace, you're still going to run into the same sort of issues like the last one where a coil might go bad or a temperature sensor. So just be aware that I probably still wouldn't recommend that you pour anything like scrap metal in this machine just because I think there are still better options out there. Now, one of the reasons I might choose this setup over the last one is maybe I just want a nicer machine. Maybe budget really isn't that big of an issue and I just want a good quality machine that I know is going to last me a little bit longer. Or maybe I'm going to start like a small business and I just know I'm going to be putting a lot of wear and tear on the machine and I'm going to be pouring just a little bit more than maybe a hobbyist or something like that. Another good reason might be if you wanted to dabble in something like lost wax casting. Because as we talked about earlier, you can use this machine as a programmable kiln. So if you want to do burnouts for your lost wax castings, this is going to be a good option for that. Now, at the end of the day, I would still consider this kind of a hobby furnace, even though it is nicer and better quality. I would just be aware of putting scrap metals and that sort of thing in it because it's just going to last a lot longer. And honestly, with a seven to eight hundred dollar machine, you might be better off just buying a separate setup for your scrap metals and that stuff so that you can have this machine last a really long time. So at the end of the day, I'm going to recommend this one to people who are maybe looking for an upgrade or maybe they're going to start a small business and going to be putting a lot of wear and tear on it or maybe to the person who is going to dabble in things like lost wax casting and you just want more options as far as what you can put inside of it and it's a better quality machine. So obviously if that's your thing and budget really isn't that big of a deal, then I might go with this option. Now another great option that's out there is actually going with a gas powered furnace and this is actually a double forged four kilogram gas furnace and what's great about this is it's actually kind of in that sweet spot where Maybe you can't really decide if you want to do scrap metal or precious metals. This is kind of right there in that sweet spot where it's not totally overkill for small stuff. But at the same time, you know, this machine is going to last a lot longer and it can put up with a lot more abuse. And also we don't have any electrical components, so you don't have to worry about a sensor going bad or a heating coil going bad. And even though Devil Forge isn't sponsoring this video, I do have to say they're a pretty great company. 
And I'm sure if something went wrong on your unit prematurely or something like that, that they'd definitely be willing to help you out. They're a pretty well-known company. And I see a lot of people using their forges and their gas-powered furnaces. So it's a pretty safe bet to go with a Devil Forge. Another bonus is obviously the price. It's right there around the same price as an entry-level electric furnace. So if maybe you just wanted to stay away from electrical components altogether, then maybe this would be a great choice for you. The only really downside to getting something like this might be if you wanted to do super large things and you might be limited on size. But other than that, there's not really anything bad you can say about these units. And honestly, if you are looking for something that just kind of can do it all, then I would honestly go with this one. And honestly, if I was to give a furnace an award, it would probably be this one just because it's the most versatile and it just does a little bit of everything. So honestly, this is like a solid bet for almost anyone. One last thing I want to add is that I did notice that this is actually cheaper over on their website versus Amazon. So you just might want to keep that in mind. So another option that I see out there is getting something like this. And this is going to be great for someone who wants to dabble in knife making or something like that. But also it's very versatile. You can do scrap metals and all sorts of stuff in it. And honestly, the only limitations with something like this might be the size and dimensions. So just make sure to read the description to make sure that it's big enough for what you want to use it for. But other than that, it's going to be pretty much the same thing as what we just talked about, where you don't have any electrical components, so you don't have to worry about that stuff going bad. But really, this setup's just going to be great for someone who wants to do a little bit of everything, but maybe you also want to dabble in knife making or something like that. As far as any specifics, like which one would I go with personally, I'd probably go with the Devil Forge, but that's just me. So the last setup I want to talk about today is just getting a bigger propane forge. And I'm talking about anything in the range of 10 kilograms to 20 kilograms. And what this is going to be great for is if you are just mainly focused on scrap metals and you're just going to be doing super big melts and you're not really going to be doing very many small things or precious metals, then this is going to be a great choice for you. Or maybe you're just a complete baller and you're going to be pouring 100 ounce silver bars you know, huge gold bars, who knows? There's not too many downsides to going with something like this. The only really thing to consider is, is this going to be overkill for what you're trying to do? You know, maybe you don't need something this big, or maybe it's not in the budget for you to get something, you know, that's this pricey. That being said, it's definitely going to be worth the price. I mean, these are going to be able to take a lot of abuse. You're basically going to have no limits as far as the size of stuff you can make. And you're also not going to have any limitations when it comes to what kind of metals you can work with. Now, if it was up to me, I'd probably go with something like the Devil Forge. But that's going to be completely up to you and what your budget's like. So really quick before we wrap things up, I wanted to take a moment to talk about torches. So you might be asking yourself, do I absolutely need a torch? And the answer is honestly no, you don't absolutely need one. What I use my torches for is mostly if I want to pour fractional silver or... If I'm trying to pour something very precise, like a quarter ounce or a half ounce, it'll come in handy then. But most importantly, you are going to need something to at least heat up your molds. So if you don't have another method of doing that, then you might need a torch for that. But you don't necessarily need a torch. Now, maybe you don't need any of the machines or furnaces or forges that we've talked about so far in this video. And you just want to start off really small. You could get away with just having a simple torch setup with a map torch or oxygen acetylene. And you could also just have some graphite molds and a little whipping dish. And you'll be able to make some pretty cool stuff just with that. So you might not even need any of the stuff that we've talked about in this video if you just wanted to start off really small like that. It's also worth noting that a lot of these torches, especially the propane torch, isn't going to be able to melt metals. It's really only going to be useful in this case to just heat your molds. Now map gas on the other hand, it will melt silver, but map gas will not melt copper in a dish. So if you wanted to be able to melt silver and copper and other things, then I'd probably go with an oxygen acetylene mixture. Now with all that in mind, I would highly recommend that you at least get a propane torch. That way you have something that you can easily heat up molds with because you're definitely going to want to heat up your molds. That's probably the number one mistake I see rookies make is they don't heat up their molds and that can end very badly. So real quick, let's go over all the options that we've talked about in this video. We've talked about anything from a simple torch setup all the way to a massive 20 kilogram Devil Forge. Now, obviously we can't go over every single thing that is available on the market in this video, but I think that gives us a good idea of the different kind of categories that are out there. And I have the confidence that after watching this video, you're gonna make a good decision on your first purchase.
Well, I think that's going to do it for this one. I really appreciate it if you stuck with me all the way to the end. And I'm really hoping that this video helped you out in finding the right setup for you. If you have any more questions that I didn't cover in this video, leave them down in the comments. And if you don't mind hitting that like button, I would really appreciate it. Also, if you like this sort of content, then consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you get notified when I drop the next video. And if you're interested in checking out some of my work, you can check out my website. That's lakehousebeach.com and you can find all of my available pieces there. Well, I'm going to get out of here, but I really appreciate you watching. I wish you the best in your pouring journey, and I hope to see you on the next video. Mm -hmm.